Uh, it feels like just a few days ago we spoke about a factory fire in Bangladesh and today we will talk about a factory collapsing in the country. We have a news report explaining more. Let's take a quick look. Days after the collapse of a building in Bangladesh, the death toll continues to rise. The building, which houses factories producing low-cost clothes for Western retailers, including Britain's Primark, was reduced to rubble on Wednesday. 273 people have now been confirmed dead, but many are still searching in hope for friends and family. The disaster focuses attention on the global links between Western company profits and potential compromises in safety for workers in developing countries. Now, just to give you some more details on this story, the death toll is now over 400 people, uh, and this is the second huge uh, industrial accident in Bangladesh in the past six months. So uh, my question goes to Desi. I mean, is this finally the tipping point? Are we going to change anything? Or, I mean, I say we, and I don't mean Americans. Uh, consumers sure can change something. But is Bangladesh going to change something when it comes to worker safety? I hope that they do. I, I don't see that there's going to be a whole lot of opportunity for Bangladesh itself to uh, to change their their working conditions, their wages, their low. You know that right now they're the second largest provider of clothing for Western uh, culture, for Western brands, and I just don't see that that being something that they have the infrastructure and the economy in place to increase the wages and working conditions for their, their people, you know? And I don't think that Americans, unfortunately, are going to say much about this either. You know, we saw with the Foxconn factory issues for the iPhone manufacturing, it, with the huge outpouring, the huge groundswell of American public sentiment, helped to change that a little bit, mm -hmm. but not a whole lot. And, and even though Americans know that may know that people are dying to give them cheap clothes, you know, there's not really a whole lot that I think Americans can do or even want to do about this. They like cheap clothes. You know, what's incredible is when you really delve into the details of the story, you see a lack of regulation. Now, yes. uh, in this specific instance, uh, Sohel Rana, the person who owned uh, that plaza, built it on swampland. He, he received a permit to build it, uh, but he was told it could only be five stories. However, he built an eight-story building, and uh, he faced absolutely no consequences as a result of that until after the situation occurred um, and now uh, he might be facing murder charges which I think makes all the sense in the world I mean what do you guys think about it Hugo should he face murder charges should he get the death penalty what are your thoughts well yeah I'm not gonna weigh into the question of the death penalty but absolutely murder charges in terms of these appalling risks that he took with his workers but again I mean I think that we have to be careful to recognize our own complicity in this too that obviously you know, there are degrees of complicity and someone who deliberately violates a permit for the sake of profit is different from someone who wants a cheap shirt at Walmart. But we're all part and connected to that system. And we, we need to do a better job, those of us who work in the media or teach or write, need to do a better job making clear what that connection is and beginning to offer alternatives, concrete alternatives to the current system so that there can be some method by which getting the right you know label on something that this was made ethically becomes affordable but also hot how do we make it affordable though because when you consider the economy and you consider the popularity of mega stores like Walmart I mean how do you look at the American consumer and tell them like hey you know what your wages have been stagnant you're barely getting by you're living paycheck to paycheck uh, now you have to be concerned about where your clothing is being made Dave. I'm not even sure that this has to do with the affordability thing. I think this is partly because the news cycle is so quick. I mean, think mm -hmm. about this. Uh, the, the shooting happened in Newtown, and we could not get gun control passed. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it failed miserably, and that was absolutely huge and happened here in America. Right. So this happened in Bangladesh. Things go so quickly that next week, unfortunately, you know, we can all talk about this story, but the story will just disappear. Look, if something like this happens in the United States and then we really get the images of Americans dying and, wh and whatever, then maybe this moves a little bit, but I, I just don't think we push things that seem like, even the Foxconn thing, which uh, the iPhone is something that we all have. You know, it's not like some random uh, shirt, you know, an unbranded shirt or something. This is something we all have and that barely 
caused an outrage. Well, so. I think this is something that, does, that did happen in the United States. About 100 years ago, the Triangle Shirtwaist right. factory fire, you know, uh, over 100 women were killed. We've outsourced those factory conditions. You know, for a period of time there, there was unions, there was some strength, there were wages and working conditions, improvements made, and now we've since outsourced those. And I don't think that it's really the affordability of clothes, it's the shareholder economy. That Walmart is not doing this to provide cheap clothes to Americans. They could care less about that. They want to improve shareholder value and increase their profits that they can then return to their shareholders. And only when we hold them accountable as an American public can we yeah. make a difference. Now, there are groups that are doing that. There's a group called cleanclothes.org, and they have a whole campaign where they're trying to point out that, hey, these companies that are being hired to audit the factories overseas, Walmart hires them, Nike hires them, everybody hires them apparently now, mm -hmm. that they're actually becoming more rubber stamp for the corporations right. to say, yeah, you know, we looked at that factory, it's fine. Yeah, shocking that the auditors paid for by the corporations are on their side. I exactly. Can't you really know, and there's one factory in Pakistan where they uh, they actually went into the rubble and found uh, that the Walmart social auditor had said, yeah, you borrowed, closed off the exits, but yeah, it's fine. Keep That's it open. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and okay, so just closing statement on this. You know, let me just jump in when it comes to affordability because I think that that is an issue. Um, because look, if you go to Walmart and you buy a, a shirt that was made in India or you know China, for instance, it's going to be significantly cheaper than what you would buy at American Apparel, for instance, right? A, a shirt at American Apparel is like thirty dollars. Right? The average American cannot afford thirty dollars shirts for all of their kids. So that is part of the problem. Yes, um, I mean, and that we, is, it, yeah. it is, but. I definitely think that American consumers should hold these companies accountable for the way they do outsource these terrible working conditions.